to have a face-to-face -face with my guest this time, I have to fly to Singapore, where she currently lives. Even though she is a familiar figure in this part of the world and often visits Indonesia, her busy schedules means catching her at the right time and the right place, in between her many activities and travels. Something I'm happy to do, as she really is a special person. Hello and welcome to Face to Face with me, I'm Daisy Anwar in a program that brings the world to your screen and where we meet people who make a difference to our lives. In this episode I talk to a supermodel, a celebrity, a face that is very familiar on television and also someone who is an echo warrior, an environmental activist and someone who cares a lot about the planet. Join me on Face to Face with Nadia Hutagalo. Most people know her as a model and a VJ with a beautiful face. But Nadia Hutagalung sees herself more as someone who wants to do something to make a difference to the world we live in. Visiting her in Singapore, Nadia takes me to attend a talk on a new conservationist project, Let Elephants Be Elephants, a project she's initiating with her zoologist friend Tammy Matson. The objective is to help stop the killing of elephants in Africa by reducing the demand for ivory in Asia. So good to see you. Yeah, good to see you and too. I can't wait to see the presentation. I know. I need to uh, get my head together and hopefully it'll be okay too. Yeah, and I yeah. see there's a lot of people coming here showing yes. great interest, obviously. Yes, it's, um, we had, uh, we're sold out. In fact, we're over, oversold the seats tonight, so that's a really good sign. Wow, yeah. that's really good. Yeah. So is this the first time that you're doing something uh, with the elephants, the left elephants? Yes, elephants? yes, it is. Um, it, it started off as just a, a, a small event we thought we would just do it to um, generate some interest mm -hmm. and, and see where it would go from there. But it's, it's turned out much bigger than we expected. Um, again, that's really heartening. And I know you've been to Africa. Yes. And yes. Um, last year, was it this year? This year. Uh, this this year. year. But how long has it been since you've been interested in elephants? Or is this something that that you got drawn into because of Tammy? Or is it something that well, I been we've interested in? I've always been interested in elephants. I guess, again, I, I, I have to say that my mom is my inspiration. I grew up with elephant statues and elephant paintings all mm. over the house. Um, and then when I met Tammy, we just she started sharing about mm. um, the plight of the elephants. And I said, I just need to go. I need to go and learn for this, learn about this for myself and, and mm. see it for my, with my own eyes. Um, and so Tammy, after the, the initial talks, she cut back to me and she said, you know what, why don't we go? And I said, you know what, why don't we go? Mm. We should go. And um, then I realized, you know, there's an opportunity here and why don't I bring a crew with me? So I mustered up some of my friends mm. and, and we took a crew and we went to Africa and we met the world's top uh, elephant um, scientists and conservationists. Uh, and uh, and people who have been working in the field of elephants, um, and got their um, perspective on what's happening with the mm -hmm. elephants, and very clearly Asia is to blame because of the demand. Because of the demand. So is is the demand of ivory s is still on the rise, or has it um, declined over the years as people got more and more aware that it's you know yeah this is physically incorrect, environmentally. Terrible and yeah, you would think so. I mean, uh, that's the general consensus. You know, everyone thinks, and, and I think especially of our generation or older, you know, they've, they've seen the lobbying before mm. of the ivory trade and, and they probably think, okay, you know, it's all been done already. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, the ivory trade now is worse than it's ever been. Really? It's worse than it's ever, ever been. 2012 saw uh, the highest number of elephants killed for their ivory. Um, and there's around 30,000 elephants a year being killed mm -hmm. for their ivory. And in 2013, in the first six months, we saw 2012 numbers already 
uh, 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 wiped, you know, uh, you know, more than 2012 numbers. So um, it is really critical right now, and mm -hmm. Africa can't fight this anymore on the ground in Africa. Mm -hmm. Even uh, at this stage, they're actually um, uh, giving weapons to the rangers, mm -hmm. but that's just going to create a bloody war. So it has to be fought here in Asia. Mm -hmm. We have to just stop the demand. And the demands are, uh, and the number of elephants are diminishing. Yes, time because of greatly. Uh, so what are you hoping to get from you know, doing this presentation and getting people to come and, and watch and, and listen to you? What, what, what are the final objectives? to get what kind of involvement from um, everybody? The final objective uh, for tonight would obviously be um, support for our campaign, mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, either in terms of sponsorship or, or partnerships, um, mm -hmm. but ultimately just to share. Tonight I really don't have, I'm not here to sell anything. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just here basically to say, look, this is what we're doing, mm -hmm. um, this is the situation. And, um, to raise awareness. To raise awareness, and, and this is what we, what we are doing from our side. Okay, well, I'm really, really excited to see um, and also yeah. I think because in Indonesia, you know, are the numbers of elephants uh, that are dying because yes. of poachers and because of human encroachment yes. basically is, is mm. quite sad. So yes. I think you've got lots of guests there waiting for you. Yes. So you should go and say hello yes. to them. What time will it start? Uh, it should be 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. Yes. Yeah. Last year, up to 36,000 elephants were killed for their ivory. At the current rate of poaching, African elephants could face extinction in the wild by 2025. Apparently, the majority of people in the world don't realize that the elephant must die or be killed in order for the ivory to be taken. Both Nadia and Tammy believe that if consumers are educated on this, demand for ivory as jewelry and luxury goods will go down. Instead, if anything, rising wealth and rising demand for ivory consumer items, particularly in countries in Asia, have encouraged the killings of large numbers of elephants in Africa. Nadia's passion and concern for the environment has gone on for a while now. Her website, called Green Kampong, is her way of sharing her green initiatives with others and to provide an online resource for those looking for information on sustainable living. Together with her husband, Desmond Cole, the website, started in 2007 in Singapore, posts articles on conservation, green business, design and architecture, food, fashion and beauty, as well as science and technology, and how to practice green living. Nadia's eco-friendly family house in Bukit Tima is Singapore's first ever eco home built from scratch, a project that took three years to complete. Most of the materials used in the construction came from sustainable sources, bought either locally or within the region to reduce the carbon footprint. It's obvious that for Nadia, green living is not just a good idea, but a choice and a way of life that can be practiced at the simplest level. So Nadia, you're taking me to your favorite organic shop. Yes, this is uh, in my hood and uh, it's where I like to get all of my fresh produce for juicing and, and cooking for the family and everything. It's a great shop. Okay. So this is where I get all of my energy and health and mm -hmm. vitality, um, usually stocking up on uh, good produce for juices. Mm -hmm. um, I juice every day. Every day? Every day. Every day I have veggie juice. Um, Just you or do you also feed your family? The family as well. Mm -hmm. um, so even the kids have gotten into juicing. My youngest surprisingly has juices and recently she had um, uh, case of hand, foot and mouth disease mm -hmm. uh, and she, so she had a lot of ulcers in her mouth but still she would put the, the spinach in and the, all mm -hmm. her greens and make a smoothie because it was the only way that she could, she could get any nutrients mm -hmm. uh, so they're, I guess they've grown up that way and they're used to it. Okay so tell me what are the, the favorite produce that you normally 
by on a regular basis? Some of the things that I love, uh, and they're not that easy to come by everywhere, uh, things like kale, which is incredibly good for you, yakon, mm -hmm. which is considered to be the king of roots, it's a Peruvian root, it mm -hmm. looks a bit like sweet potato. Um, it's fantastic for moderating sugar levels and great for diabetics and very good for preventing things like colon cancer. Wow. Really, really good. I'm, I'm impressed. I mean, uh, do you cook yes. every day for yourself and for the family? Um, ideally, yes. Ideally, yes. But um, given that uh, sometimes my schedule can be a little bit crazy mm -hmm. um, it doesn't it doesn't always happen that way but um, my help is at home we've, we've spent a lot of time uh, mm -hmm. learning about cooking and what's the best way to, to feed us all so and always you, get and you make food. sure that the, the stuff that you use is all organic and healthy um, mostly organic mm -hmm. um, and there's, there's various reasons for that and um, you know they say that there's a, there, there was an article that came out I think this year that said there's no difference between organic food and, and non-organic food. Mm -hmm. And I think in terms of nutrients that there, there might be a case there, but in terms of whatever is added to the produce, mm -hmm. there, there is no argument. You know, you can't be feeding yourself pesticides and chemicals and, and genetically modified food because mm -hmm. there's no way that, that any of that is good for you. And one of the interesting things that that I always talk about is the fact that if you want to live a kinder lifestyle, if you want to live a, a, a more planet-friendly lifestyle, um, the easiest thing to do to adjust your carbon footprint mm -hmm. is to eat less meat. Mm -hmm. Which you are doing. You don't eat meat much? I don't eat much meat. Uh, occasionally I have no choice because I have a lot of allergies, mm -hmm. food sensitivities. So sometimes when I'm, I'm shooting or on location, then, mm -hmm. then I will eat some, some meat. Mm -hmm. And your children actually enjoy eating. I mean, are they not sometimes, you know, children can get quite fussy about what they eat. And are they quite happy to... Well, my two eldest, I don't really have much control over. <laughs> uh, you know, the two, two boys. Uh, our youngest is, uh, she's still vegetarian. And uh, how about in terms of, I mean, you have such a busy schedule and mm. preparing these foods must take an awful long time, especially when you have to do them yourself. How do you fit them in then? Um, well, I, 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 one of the easiest things that I do is always um, juice and I make juices and smoothies mm -hmm. uh, and that doesn't really take much time um, and get, I get a lot of sustenance from that and the smoothies can contain various nuts and oils mm -hmm. and, and, and seeds and, uh, and, and um, proteins mm -hmm. and things like that and then my juices are all my veggies as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, so if I'm really under pressure and running, running tight on time, that's my go-to. Uh, but I really do try to focus on food. Um, it is one of my greatest passions and uh, because I'm a foodie, because I have so many food sensitivities and restrictions based on ethics mm -hmm. and, and environmental reasons, I have to focus so much on food, otherwise I'm left with yeah. nothing to eat. But has it helped you health-wise, <coughs> keeping Ab your energy, keeping your shape and keeping yes. you healthy? Absolutely. I recently did a, um, a very extensive uh, blood test, a blood workup, and looking out for everything, you know, the, all the cancer, stroke, uh, and everything was low. Everything was low, so uh, cancer, no cancer markers, no markers for stroke, no markers for, mm -hmm. for um, um, uh, heart disease, um, cholesterol was low, sugars were low, everything was good. Mm -hmm. And you, I see that when you tweet, you tweet a lot about your juices. And what kind of feedback have you been getting? Are a lot of people curious and say, you know, Nad, I really want to follow your lifestyle or a lot um, um, a lot of really great response to the juices uh, and for me it's just a little way of, of sharing good health you know for me I, I do the things that I do only in, with the hopes that I can inspire people to be happy and to be healthy uh, and and have an educated uh, way of, of making decisions yes. about how they live their lives. Making the right choices, yes. especially when the planet actually needs that kind of yes. choices we make. So and this is something you picked up or you do you actually go out of your way to learn about these I go dishes? out of my way to learn about these things because to me nutrition is really important, mm -hmm. uh, wellness is also really important. Uh, so because I've had to struggle with mm -hmm. food um, and I know that a lot of people do, 
a lot of people um, also don't know that they have so many food sensitivities and end up feeling unwell and mm -hmm. lethargic and bloated and tired and puffy and all of those things and they don't realize that it's all to do with to do food with the stuff they put sinuses, in sinuses yeah. migraines you know all of those things and so I, it's really helped your allergies it's yeah. really really helped my allergies okay well let's continue with your shopping and let's look around the shop yeah